Good morning, everyone. Can everybody hear me all right? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Archer, Chief of the Lynn Fire Department. And on behalf of myself, Deputy Chief Arthur Richard, and all the members of the Lynn Fire Department, I want to welcome you to our 20th September 11th Memorial Observance. In just a few minutes, you're going to be also greeted by representatives of the Lynn Police Department, Atlantic Ambulance, elected officials from the city of Lynn, and members of our congressional delegation. All of us, I'm sure, share, share the same sentiment of gratitude to those of you who have shown up this morning to join us for this important, solemn occasion. It was 20 years ago on a beautiful early fall morning very much like this one, that we were all shaken to the core as we watched on TV in disbelief, with the details becoming more clear that what we were witnessing was the unleashing of the most horrific act of terrorism ever perpetrated on our nation. Those of us who remember that were all forever changed that day. In the following days, we all saw the videos repeated over and over again of those planes hitting the towers. We heard details of two other planes, one of them crashing into the Pentagon, a fourth one in a field in Pennsylvania. And then we watched in horror as those buildings collapsed into an unimaginable heap of rubble. We were all too aware that lost in the midst of that heap were the lives of hundreds of emergency workers, firefighters, police, EMTs, paramedics, and others who had rushed in with little concern for their own safety in an effort to save the lives of others. It is for them that we gather each year to mark this date, to honor their memory and to say loudly and clearly to the world, we will never forget their sacrifice. By doing this every year, we reaffirm to any that will listen that from the ashes of that rubble, a renewed determination has risen up in all of us who serve to never allow some act of treachery or cowardice to deter us from our mission of protecting the lives and property of our communities and our neighbors. That's the legacy that was left to us by those brave men and women who sacrificed all they had and died beneath that massive pile. We are fully committed to carrying on their legacy. So as we pause once again here in our little corner of the world on this, the 20th anniversary of that tragic morning, we express our thanks to those of you who take your time to share with us in this solemn remembrance. I'd like to begin our time together this morning by asking Pastor Kurt Lang of East Coast International Church in Lynn to open us with a word of prayer. Pastor Lang. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, Today, as we remember the tragedy and triumph of that day, we invite you to comfort us as we mourn. We ask for your grace and mercy to wrap around the children and families of those who were lost on 9-11 in the many years of loss that have followed. We invite you today to be our hope and our healing to all who are gathered today. And we are grateful for the sacrificial love that was shown to us that day by the policemen and the firemen and the first responders who laid down their lives so that others might be rescued. 
Today I remember the unity of a nation in the days that followed 9-11. And I would also ask today that you remind us that in spite of our differences, in spite of our different understandings, that we are in fact better together than we are separate. Remind us that a nation divided against itself cannot stand and that unity is in fact possible, especially when we face clear and present dangers. 20 years ago, we saw evil lift its ugly head and we were all changed. Help us to carefully consider the words of the Apostle Paul, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I pray this in the name of Jesus who set this example for us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lang. And now it's our privilege to have leading us in the singing of our national anthem, one who has done the honor for us so many times at our Firefighter Memorial Sunday observances, our very special friend, Beth Hilton. observance the sound of police fire ambulance sirens in the background remind us the work goes on we continue to serve no matter what and now I'd like to invite to the podium our very own chief of police chief Chris Reddy Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today on this solemn occasion. I want to thank Chief Archer, the members of the, police, of the uh, fire department, for inviting us to participate in this ceremony to recognize those who suffered and were lost during the worst terrorist attack that ever occurred in the history of our country. Growing up in a large family, I learned early on that the sibling you bickered with over whose turn it was to take out the trash or to shovel the driveway. It was the same person who was gonna have your back later in the day, in the schoolyard, or the playing field, or anywhere else. I often think of that analogy when thinking about the relationship shared by the police, firefighters, and EMS personnel who make up the first responder family. We know that in times of danger, we will be there for each other and for the people in our community, despite the risk to our personal safety. That was never more evident than on the morning of September 11, 2001, when our brothers and sisters from the police department, the fire department, and EMS ran towards the danger, 
without regard for their own personal safety in an effort to save, save the lives of so many innocent victims. And many lives were saved that day through their efforts. Sadly, many others could not be saved. And despite their courageous efforts, many of those first responders made the ultimate sacrifice. And in the days that followed, as they worked tirelessly to locate the victims so that they could be identified and their families might have closure, they faced hidden dangers that will continue to take lives for several decades to come. As we stand here today in remembrance of those tragic events, let us honor those who continue to face the consequences of their heroic acts by finding inspiration in their courage and dedication to duty. And let us recall how we came together in the days that followed that awful day in the spirit of patriotism and brotherhood. And let it be known that we will continue to run towards the danger and we will continue to have your back. Always remember, thank you. Thank you, Chief Reddy. And now I'll invite to the microphone someone you'll notice bears a slight resemblance to the last speaker, his slightly less good looking brother, then Firefighters Local 739 President, Lieutenant Matt Reddy. Good morning. 20 years ago on this terrible day, tragedy came amongst all of us. We stand together in memory of the innocent victims who just went to work, the heroes who went into those buildings to take them home, and the soldiers who fought and continue to fight to make sure it never happens again. The attacks that day were intended to break our spirit. Instead, we emerged stronger and more unified. September 11th was a day when a few tried to fill our lives with hate killing and desperation, but it was overcome by so many who turned hate into heroes, desperation into determination, and killing into kindness. Out of the darkness that day came the light in so many forms from so many. Acts of bravery, empathy, and charitable givings like we've never seen before as a country. The smallest acts of service, the simplest acts of kindness, and the promise to always remember those who lost, that we lost that day, is how we must continue to go forward as a country. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Reddy. I'm privileged to introduce to you now, to bring us some remarks, the mayor of our city, Mayor Thomas M. McGee. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. I'm very honored to be here with all of you this morning. And I know probably some of you did as, as I did this morning as I was leaving the house and listening to the survivors naming the names of those lost down in New York on this day. I was really struck in, in a very eerie way about a beautiful sky blue late summer day, just like that day 20 years ago as we stand here today, and as they stand down in New York at ground zero right now. And that day is seared forever in all of our memories. The tremendous loss, sadness, and anger, but also displays of courage. Today, 20 years later, we stand here to honor the lives of those lost innocently as they went to work, boarded a plane, and the brave first responders who went in after them to try and save their lives. We must also reflect on the countless number of heroes who courageously took part in the search and rescue effort that day <coughs> and the days and weeks that followed, many of who continue to face medical complications from their efforts that day and the, in the weeks that followed. It changed and affected in a profound way all of us in unimaginable ways. The attacks were meant to break our nation and instead we were unified. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Lynn Fire Police EMTs, EMS, who show up and put their lives on the line every day to serve and protect the members of our community 
here in Lynn, and to their families who selflessly support them, understanding the sacrifice that comes with their jobs, and they understand that every day when they leave to go to work. As we gather here today to remember the seemingly incomprehensible horrors of September 11th, 2001, I ask us all to take a moment to self-reflect about the meaning of never forget. How do we preserve the legacy of those who lost their lives and live up to their example? To never take what you have for granted? To remind yourself that we are all Americans, regardless of our race, religion, and creed, and to come together when those in our community need a helping hand. May those we lost and their families remain in our hearts today and forever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would also like to take a moment to recognize some of our other distinguished guests and dignitaries that are here with us, um, whose names I may, I know I'm gonna miss some of them, I'm gonna miss somebody, but I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to give it my best. Um, from the city councilor, from the city council, we're honored to have with us city councilors Hong Net, Buzzy Barton, Jay Walsh, Ryan Field, Diane Chikudis, Davin Sear, Rick Starbird. All right, who did I miss? Ah, and Mitch Colucci. Sorry, Rich, you're hiding in the back there. Uh, we are so very honored to have them with us here to share this important event. Um, we're also represented by a number of our congressional delegation, uh, State Senator Brendan Crichton, State Representative Dan Cahill. Um, our good friend Dave Salamini is here, as well as Dave Salamini Jr. Brian Castellanos is with us as well. And uh, I am so very glad, uh, glad um, Mr. Nicholson is here. <laughs> Jared Nicholson is here as well. I'm sorry I missed you. I knew I was going to miss somebody. And also Sheriff uh, Kevin Carpenter from Essex County is here with us as well. So we're so grateful for the support that all these individuals and anyone who else who I may, may have missed uh, shows us on a regular basis. We appreciate it tremendously. And with that, representing our elected officials, I will ask to come and offer some remarks. State Representative Dan Cahill. Good morning, everyone. Excuse me if I'm a little rusty. This is the largest crowd I think we spoke in front of for about two years. And I think that goes to show how important today's date is. I'm lucky to represent on behalf of our state delegation, Senator Crichton, as well as Representative Peter Capano, Representative Lori Ehrlich, and Representative Donald Wong, who are all at other parts of their districts today doing the same very thing we're here doing in Lynn. And Chief Archer had mentioned about the weather, and I'm, 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 I'm sure I'm not alone, that many of us woke up this morning and reflected upon how this is identical, nearly identical to what it was on September 1st, the September 11th, 2001. And we all have vivid memories of that day. In fact, I have such a vivid memory, uh, I think I recall that day more than I recall the birth of my son, which either uh, is a testament to how important that day was or my deficiencies as a father. But that day is seared in all of our minds uh, and has really impacted an entire generation. And although many of us in this, many of us here today re recall that day, there are an entire generation that does not recall that day. Yet they have fought wars as a result. And they have lived and fought to try to prevent those types of attacks from ever happening again. And much like our parents and our grandparents lived through the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, it's incumbent upon us and our children to make sure that September 11th, 2001 is also a date, as FDR said, about Pearl Harbor, a day that would live in infamy, that that date is also not forgotten and that we continue to pay respect to those who have lost family members and lives and colleagues in the attacks of 9-11. And with that, I also want to thank our public safety officers and their families. Uh, the, uh, the, the sacrifices that you make on a daily basis for, for families that you don't know uh, and people who you don't know uh, is remarkable. Many of us have no comprehension of what you do on a daily basis. But you should know 
that everyone is entirely and internally grateful for what you do. And we're reminded on days like September 11th of how terrible those days can go, but how brave men and women can be. And we're grateful for all you do and for every day when you put on your uniform. I'm honored to be here. May everyone in this audience be blessed. And may the United States be blessed as well. Thank you, Representative Cahill. And now we will have a reading of the governor's proclamation recognizing this day from our own Deputy Fire Chief, Arthur Richard. A proclamation. Whereas September 11, 2021, marks the 20th anniversary of the attacks on American institutions, such as the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And whereas on this day in 2001, 2,977 people lost their lives as a result of these acts of terrorism. And whereas countless first responders put their lives on the line to save victims of the attacks at the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And whereas the Commonwealth honors the hundreds of first responders who sacrificed their lives that day. And whereas the Commonwealth recognizes the extraordinary acts of hero heroism demonstrated by the citizens and first responders who stepped up to help one another on September 11, 2001. And whereas in the days following September 11, 2001, Americans came together in a spirit of patriotism, unity, and resolve to honor those lost. And whereas Massachusetts lost 206 residents in these attacks, and all members of the Commonwealth continue to grieve alongside the families who suffered tremendously in its aftermath. And whereas the devastation that was left in the aftermath of this tragedy will never be erased, but in honoring the memory of all who lost their lives, we remain unified and will never forget the events of that day. Now therefore, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, does hereby proclaim September 11, 2021 to be 9-11 Remembrance Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of September in the year 2021 and of the independence of the United States of America the 245th. Thank you, Deputy Richard. We will now observe the ceremonial <coughs> ringing of the bell, along with the laying of a wreath at our firefighter memorial. The memorial is dedicated to all the Lynn firefighters who died in the line of duty and those who later succumbed to injuries sustained in the line of duty. The ringing of the bell is a ceremonial firefighting tradition that dates back 200 years in the fire service. A bell was traditionally rung when the all clear was sounded at the end of a call. So the bell has become a symbol used to announce the death of a fellow firefighter who has come home for that final time. We refer to it as the ringing of the last alarm. On this day, we ring the last alarm and lay a wreath in honor of all the emergency service personnel who paid the ultimate price on 9-11. Uh, incidentally, uh, Lynn's fire's ceremonial bell was a generous gift of the Zawinski family of Lynn, and it was meticulously restored to the condition you see it in by our own firefighter, Paul Hanrahan. The laying of the wreath today will be performed by our network administrator, Kerry Stone. She will lay the wreath as the ceremonial bell is tolled.
Now we will observe a full moment, full minute of silence in honor of all those killed on 9-11. Lynn Fire Lieutenant Edward Whittier's son, Ryan Whittier, and we thank him for performing that honor for us. And now is the, f yes, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Ryan. And now as the flag is ceremonially returned to full staff, we will be honored by a performance by the Lynn English High School ROTC drill team. enjoyed this presentation. Ready?
this presentation. Ready? Two. This is an award-winning, nationally recognized ROTC drill team, and we are so privileged to have them right here in the city of Lynn. The skill and dedication, devotion that they show uh, is just phenomenal. We are always, always honored anytime they come to perform for us. So let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> just absolutely fantastic. And now we're honored, it's our distinct pleasure to have joining us for the singing of God Bless America, one of Lynn's own, our very own, tenor, Brian Corcoran. Let's welcome Brian Corcoran. How much of a tenor I'll be at this time. I'm very humbled to be here, and I ask you please to join with me. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the ocean white with foam. God bless America, my home. Sweet home from the mountain to the prairie to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. America, 
So much Brian for that wonderful rendition we truly truly appreciate him and now as the flag is restored to full staff <clears throat> and as we prepare to conclude this 20th September 11th remembrance and go our separate ways please remember that all of us in emergency services appreciate so very much the ways that you all demonstrate your appreciation and support of what we do throughout the year. Your cards, phone calls, expressions of love and support mean more to us than you could ever imagine. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now Pastor Lang will come forward once again to dismiss us and to offer a closing benediction after which our detail will be dismissed. And before you leave, Please feel free to mill around and greet the firefighters, police officers, EMTs, and let them know how much you appreciate their service. Uh, you see us standing shoulder to shoulder here. That's how we do our mission. That's how we perform what it is we do day in and day out, shoulder to shoulder, side by side, supporting and lifting up each other. And your support of us gets us through day after day. So please, greet them and say hello. Remember, we are here for you. That's the plan. Let's pray once more. And now, Father, we give you this time. We give you our hopes and our fears, our grief and our mourning. We give you our anger and our frustration. And we ask that you would bring healing to us and to our nation for the wounds of the past and for the wounds of the present. Let us go from this place today, not as victims, but as victors and overcomers. We were struck down, but we were not destroyed. And in the words of the prophet Micah, do not gloat over me, my enemies, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Amen. Thank you all again. Go in peace and may God bless us all. Mr. Fallon, please dismiss the detail. Detail! Let's head! Move! Fall out! Dismissed! Fall out! Thank you all again.